one thing that gets lost in podcasts, messages, Instagram, social media is it's not all, I mean, I would be deadlifting a thousand pounds by now if it just kept going up. Yeah. And that's the argument you hear from people. If progressive overload work, we'd all be benching a thousand, you know? Yeah. But the problem is this, it's also, and, and you know this, Scott, it's after a while you're, you're doing the same movement. You're doing it better. Yeah, you feel yeah. it better. And you might actually be doing the same weight for less reps, less weight for the same rep. It doesn't, but you're connecting better. You know, so progression is not always black and white pounds. Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. Of course, Big Ron Parlo, Dusty Hanshaw, the producer, Scott McNally. Welcome to the show. Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. I want you to hold it that time. Yes. Make sure that you do all the uh, pro algorithm stuff that helps us out so that we can constantly get dopamine release from climbing numbers of views. Yes, exactly. You guys help us out. That's the value I have in my life. (laughs) That's it. I just hit refresh yeah. on the YouTube all just refresh, day. refresh. Me too. And then I take screen caps of it, which I have, and send it to you guys. You know, you go, look how it's going. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I refresh no. on one hand and I have a bottle of pills on the other, depending on how it goes. Is that a bad <laughs> <joke>? <laughs> too early in the show. Too early in the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. So remember, uh, we are sponsored by Mutant. We want to always thank Mutant for uh, supporting the podcast. And, uh, you know, check out immutant.com and order your ISO surge, order your all in pre workout, and everyone should get on the gear. So get the gear. I am mutant.com. Of course, use Dusty20 or Big Ron20 to get your 20% off. Okay, done deal. Support the brands that support the hardcore. That's how we do it here. So, I like this. what are we starting with? What's our opening topic? I know Dusty was a little bit irritated with something, but do we want to unleash right off the bat? Scott? Do we unleash or do we go we to the... Is it like a question about flowers and rainbows and then yeah. we'll get to Let's Dusty? go to 88. Let's ease in this time. Let's okay. Ease okay. In. So this yeah. related to... And, and we should tell people, people have heard us mention watch parties that we've been doing. For We, we can't forget that our <clears throat> audio listeners, they're not getting to see that stuff. So if you guys yeah. are on audio, you know, we have people that are like, hey, I love listening to you on the train in New York on my commute to work. You know, that's that's the only time they hear us. But if you go to YouTube, we've been doing every Saturday now. We've had, as Ron's calling it, our watch party. I'm calling it It's Just Bodybuilding Reacts. And the yeah, last yeah. one we just did was guys training, going into the 88 Olympia. We saw like a vignette into what Gold's Gym was like back then. Um, and so I think this related to that. He said, I think I got a good question for you that won't risk getting demonetized. On the battle for the Olympia 88, um, in all the footage I found from that era, you really never see the ungodly weights, even amateur competitors post on Instagram today. Tom Platt's aside, do you guys think a uh, Olympia 88 physique could be built keeping everything under three plates for all exercises? <laughs> well, um, I think one thing that uh, you have to keep in mind is just like genetics are always going to be a factor. And there was so many fewer people doing it back then that you were just kind of only seeing the gifted, the gifted ones, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like um, it wasn't the best pool to draw from if you're just going to compare to normal people, you know, there's so many more people training now that we have all this other insight into like, you know, what needs to be done. And, and also the drugs is just a huge thing. Like, trend is 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 like the amount of stuff people take now like Mm -hmm. direct correlation with your average strength of your average meathead you know and um it just the way things go with like you know the was it the three minute mile or was it the four minute mile i can't remember whatever that bear the four minute mile yeah the big the big barrier you know and then once that one guy broke it everyone did it and and i think instagram's a factor i've talked about that before too in in how it just like shows people oh everyone's doing this like i know guys that squat five plates it's like totally just normal to them but like my generation if you squatted five plates like you were like like you were like the only guy in the gym that was doing that shit and it was like crazy and people couldn't believe you were squatting five plates for reps you know what i mean Mm -hmm. now it's like 
Every day I go in the gym, I'm like, oh yeah, someone's got five plates in the rack. Like, and sh- and she's only doing figure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's only figure. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think you got to factor in too. Just uh, one more thing with the Battle for the Olympia when it was being filmed. Yes, oh, pretty yeah. close to show. So we're not. That, that's not a video because because I've seen stuff from the 70s and 80s. And don't get me wrong, not the kind of weight people are using now. Yeah. But they weren't training light. They were training mm-hmm. heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, I also think that there's a strength barrier that takes place when the shorts are really short. Because <laughs> they had really short shorts. And it just seems like and maybe deep squats. Anyway, yeah, things are falling out. You just got to be careful. Um, yeah. But no, I, I got to factor that in because it, it is the smart people are going to tone it down at the end. Because that's when things can go, you know. I say the smart people because I never did. Um, no. But the rest of the smart people definitely kick it back because there's, there, you're not growing during that time. So your risk to reward ratio is out the window um, if you're training that heavy. Um, but to answer the question directly from me, why? That's kind of my answer to everything. You know, it's like, could you get ready for a show with just chicken and rice? Sure. <laughs> Why? Right. You know what I mean? Like, so, so for me, it, it, you really want to come back to what's the best result to you. And, and I know, uh, f- like on my social media, it used to be really common. I'd, I'd put up a video and then someone would go on there or, or, or hell, I'll, I'll go with someone much better than me. Branch Warren would have a video up blasting weights and then someone would go on there and comment and go well phil heath doesn't use all that weight and i'm like well phil doesn't have to like, right. <laughs> like, right that's just not I how it went like, yeah like it, there's no there was no reason for him again back to that risk to reward like why would he do a bent row with 405 if he could get it done with the machine or whatever and it was he wasn't training hard but relative to what he needed to do you know whereas a guy like branch like that's what it took to build his physique end of story so i just like to always probably like parlay that side it's like yes you can do a lot with just three plates but i don't see the sense if you're literally the point where you could move up but you're not just to stay under yeah yeah i also think there was a lot more like pure volume training going on back then oh yeah yeah. like like so they're like it, you know, so, I mean, that your poundages are just going to be way lower. Like, they just thought differently, you know? Like, no one was thinking of, like, five-plate inclines. Like, right. they just weren't thinking that way. They were like, okay, you know, I need more sets of flies to bring. And also, too, like, some of their thinking, even though it might not have been correct, it it may have, like, helped them. <laughs> like, you know, like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't need to bench five plates. I need more stretches on my flies to bring out the inner peck. And, like, yeah. they think that way. <laughs> I got to twist you my know? hand this way. Yeah, I got to twist the- my hand more on my flies. <laughs> and I got to really push more on my dips. And I got to really get that inner peck going. Yeah. And that might have, like, maybe that was, like, stopped them from focusing on trying to bench five plates for reps. Sure. <laughs> you know, Valid. almost <clears throat> almost saved them. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of range of motion stuff back then that I think when you look at like I didn't feel like bodybuilders back in the day were muscle bound hmm. because right. of how they trained you know I mean when you watch like a fly from back in the day it was like they were trying to see if they could touch their elbows to the floor, touch the floor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. watch Arnold do flies and pumping iron watch yeah. Arnold do flies he lifts his sternum up and almost like reaches for the floor yeah. it's yep. freaky and then the T-bar rose, remember that T-bar? Because it goes past his feet. Like he oh, can actually yeah. go, he can actually go past his feet with the bar because it's yeah. like he's standing up on that, that thing. Platforms, yeah. And uh, he's like banging the bottom. It's yeah. like full <laughs> bent over like that. And then just pull <laughs> right up and hit the chest. Boom. And it's that, like, you know, it's like a, a five foot range of motion on the T-bars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> But hey, man, you do enough volume of that stuff, everything would have to grow. It would hit everything. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> Might not be the most efficient way to do it, but whatever. Well, they didn't have anything to do all day. They were invest- yeah, they investing in real estate. Day. He's like, right. what am I going to do? He's already a millionaire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're filming Pumping Iron. He's literally a millionaire rich. already. People didn't even realize that. He's a millionaire in Pumping Iron. He's already rich. Yeah. yeah. He's got all day. <laughs> 
And then Mentor That's came along. Got train logger. Why I'm bored? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, then Mentor came along. Then things, I mean, for some yeah. people changed and they, they yeah. went that other direction. But I mean, how many people, how many people can really do the volume of Arnold? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. how many people does that, like going back to what you guys are originally saying, how many people does that days, actually days work for? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like there's footage Jim, Arnold, you know, there's footage Arnold, like incline pressing a plate and a half for reps. Like, yeah. He's doing like, and it looks like he's working out. He's not like warming up, like you know. But he might have been like twenty five sets of chest. Hey, deep. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, you know? lost Dusty. I thought I heard him. I thought I heard him say, "Hey, babe." I thought he did. Yeah, he was yeah. asking your date. Oh, he came back. Here he is. Let's see what he has to say for him. What does he have to say for himself? Oh, hey. What's up, buddy? <laughs> he's very frozen at the moment. Give him a very second frozen. here. Yeah, he's just got to warm back up. There we go. There we go. Yeah. There we go. I'm back. What'd you do? I'm back. It was Harvey's fault. Harvey oh, okay. did something. I don't know, but it had to have been him. Blame yeah, the one that doesn't speak. That's the magic. Okay. I'm really disappointed because, Scott, you were just like making a really exciting point about Messer, and then I was like, oh. Well, I'm, I think. I'm, I'm the only one that doesn't hear it. You know, it's the, here's the deal is that. So all that volume, everybody's doing tons and tons of volume, the whole weeder approach and all of that, weeder training principles. And then Menser came along and he basically proposed the exact opposite. Like, let's get it all done in one set, you know? And then from there, mm -hmm. the, the way that, the, in the way Scott Stevenson put it, he suggested that some of these guys might have made good progress doing that program because they, they had been doing such high volume for so long, just taking a break was what they needed, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it may not have even been the the lower volume, but I, I don't know. My thought is this. I wonder, the que the question, can you do everything you need to get that kind of physique with no more than three plates? Man, if you could do three plates, like for your average gym guy, if you could do three plates on everything, I feel like you could have a heck of a physique. Let me just put it yep. that way. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. We're talking I've, like, I, yeah. I've known a lot of guys over the years, they might've been lighter in body weight, Right, they might have been smaller guys, quote unquote, but they never squatted more than, th and they never squatted more than three plates or used crazy weights on legs. But they did nice, deep, long ranges of motions, and they trained hard, and they had crazy legs. Yeah. I've known lots mm -hmm. of guys where I, I see their legs, and I'm like, whoa, that guy's legs are awesome. And then I watch him train, and it's not, he's not stacking, they're not stacking plates. They're like perfect squats and like executing like perfectly and and then also too i think being built to like quad dominant squat like having yeah. certain structural things is gonna make mm -hmm. your legs like you know compound movements just kind of do more for your thighs you know right and so some guys are just built right <clears throat> and you just you think man you know you don't it's there's there's so much more to it but i mean obviously they're their loads are heavy for how they perform their exercises, which is my point is that yeah. they're still training right. heavy, but it's within like really tight parameters. So the weights aren't crazy. Yeah. And just well, across the board, thinking of like just an average guy at the gym, how many average guys do you know are doing like reps with three plates on the bench reps for mm -hmm. three plates on a barbell row and reps for three plates on the squat. If you could do all three of those things, I bet you've got a pretty killer physique. Maybe, yeah. maybe you could hang with the guys in 88. I don't know. Probably that's yeah. where genetics comes in. But man, if you could work yeah, yeah. up to that, that'd be incredible for a lot of guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's no. when you realize that when we, when somebody asked about that, uh, 225 for 10 thing or, 315 for yeah. 10 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> how, how skewed our minds get by who we hang out with. I'm like, well, that's your terrible. mind was the most skewed. It was so funny. Was it what can the how much like what was it? Can the average guy bench 225 or something? And does like, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Or was it what percentage of the population can bench 225? And I think Dusty said like 15%. Like, no. <laughs> it's like, not even close. Six like zero decimal points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Things get skewed. They get skewed when you hang out with the wrong people, apparently, or the right people. Yeah. 75% so, of the people that's a, that's a solid I know can bench question, 225. Though, I like that. It's good. Yeah. Everyone I know can bench 225. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in your house can bench 225. <laughs> exactly. I mean, come on. <laughs> we had a, a bunch of other good stuff. I know you had a, a big weekend, Ron, and there was a question um, about taking over a gym. 
Uh, what did he say here? And, and, and I know, so this kind of relates because you guys just had your sixth anniversary when, and you had your birthday. So we want to hear all about it. And let's somehow tie this question into to that conversation, because the question is, what advice wow. would you give someone that is taking over a gym? What issues, problems did Ron have when opening West Coast Iron? Uh, what to look for? Also, equipment colors. Does it need to be matching or not? Oh, that's a lot. I also um, sent him the video, Ron, um, that you answered on your Q and A uh, the other day about like what you guys, how you built your community. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Important. Okay. So yeah, well, I'll, that, I'll tie that's, that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that that's a big part. Um, so he actually specifically said taking over a gym, and now I can't quite remember what the advice was because, uh, but I I think the advice that I got was. If, if you take over the gym, you don't keep the name. I remember having oh. someone tell me, you got to rebrand. Like, don't ever take over a gym and keep it the same. You got to rebrand. You got to rebrand. You got to mm -hmm. make it different. You got to do something. So I remember that was advice I got. Um, I've never, we, we didn't use it though, because like we started West Coast from scratch. It was, there was the gym that had been there was closed, right? It was, it wasn't, we did not take over. We did not get any of their members. We did not, we didn't, couldn't even get in their computer. Hmm. Started from scratch, <laughs> you know? So uh, we didn't take over a gym in any sense of that. You know what I mean? Um, but I think I, I got some advice from like Ed Connors has given me a lot of advice over the years. And he's like the gym architect, right? On He's like the guy yeah. that owned Gold's Gym all through the 80s and 90s, right? Why has he not been on our show, by the way? We yeah. we got to talk to him yeah. out in Germany, I remember, wasn't it? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were yeah. chatting to him in Germany. Yeah, yeah. I, we should still get Ed Connors on the show. The stories yeah, he has. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember him telling me, he's like, yeah, if you if you like take over a gym chain, you got to change the name and rebrand for sure. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, okay. Good advice. So, um, but anyways, moving on from that, it's, it's, uh, I mean, if, if you're gonna try to play the game of the big fitness corporate, like multi-location gym, you're like really gonna have a hard time because they have multiple locations. Mm. They have all these things they can offer for cheap rates, you know, all that sort of stuff. Like if you're going to play their game, that's a tough game to play. Like if you're fighting, like hundred million dollar companies right yeah. but when you play the do the gym your way game you, you you're not you don't have to worry about them like it's a different it's a totally different business mm -hmm. you know our average member comes 4.7 times a week our average member comes 4.7 times a week that's outrageous for a gym we have like all of our members are regulars like you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's the exact opposite of the corporate gym model. And we didn't really mean to do like, we didn't mean for it to be such a polar opposite. We just, just how it worked out. You know what I mean? So, um, so when you don't have a bunch of inactive members, hmm. you have to draw a lot of revenue from other things. First of all, your membership has to be more expensive because you're more exclusive. You know, there's mm -hmm. not a bunch of in the way people, you know what I mean? And uh, then you also have to make sure you brand your gym and, you know, you got to have merch and probably a juice bar or some sort of revenue that way. And all the pro shop stuff can be a big deal. And, you know, you got to think differently than the corporate gyms. Cause, you know, a lot of the corporate gyms don't have a supplement bar. They don't have a juice bar. They don't have like you just, you know, training it out. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of that. But but yeah, you just you got it's a different business than than the fitness club, like a private gym is it's a totally different business. So you just have to realize that. And it's all about community if you're going to run a uh, like a technically a small business, right? It's all about community because for small business to compete with big corporate interest, you have to have something that they don't and can't have. And community's the the main thing, hmm. you know. That's what you yeah. give up when you go to a you know a corporate gym that has ten thousand people or whatever. Is you know you're kind of going to give that up for you know convenience <clears throat> or cheap rate or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some people don't care. Some people don't care, you know, that's fine. But, um, but yeah, community is going to be, community is going to be something that you can build and offer that other people can't. And it's going to be something that's unique to you, your place and your gym and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's my thing, I guess. That's my advice. And so Scott, I want to see you build if you community. Could, yeah. 
uh, if you could play that uh, video, um, I literally screen recorded this for whatever well, reason. I think oh. the key uh, to you know to do what we wanted to do is that you know you have to build a community. So you have to create an environment somehow um, where people can really just give her because that's how they really. I don't know. I know it, it could get pretty deep, but that's how they really get to know themselves and. And they really kind of feel like, you know, if, if they're trying to be the best version of themselves and they feel like they're contributing to the community around them and it just builds the gym from the inside out, you know, um, you know, that's that's a huge part of it. And then the staff, I mean, you know, your staff have to love the gym, too, just as much as the members, you know, and when you get staff that love the gym, um, I mean, it just it's a game changer. That's cool. I, I could see that I could see that too, Ron. That your staff all loves the gym. Every time I've been there, you know, even like just getting a shake up at the juice bar and stuff. Like the people are the people who work there are like happy to be there. Yeah, I mean, you hope so, right? You try your best. You try your best to make. So it's it's make, it's make funny. I, I I screen recorded this because I was going to post it actually. Huh. Um, and then I just held off because the weekend was crazy and whatever. And the reason that I that it hit me was a that's where I came from. Obviously, mm. training at Muscle Factory. What Ron spoke of there was what you had. Like <clears throat> you you were truly a member of a club if you went to Muscle Factory. If you go to West Coast Iron, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. So the goals that I'm a member at currently is a corporate goals. And they're fine. They're be- because of who they have as a staff, the gym is great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the equipment is weak in comparison to what I'm used to, but I understand that that's just hard to find. Um, but when I came in here, the very first thing I noticed was like, oh, man, like the John that's, that I train with on the weekend sometimes, I didn't know him then. He just had a vibe. Everyone knew him. He talked to people. He knew everybody by name. There was all that stuff. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and I could go on and on. But – now the corporate sold this gym to people who own a bunch of gyms. Hmm. And of course, at first I was like, oh, nice. Like these are gym owners. This isn't corporate. Things are going to change. And they have. Uh, the first thing they've done is removed and sold a bunch of cardio equipment. So there's hmm. less cardio. Uh, the prices have went up. And you can feel the community part is going to dwindle. And I can see because I have two eyes and go to the gym at the same time that the members are dropping. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, and coincidentally, as time, as luck would have it, there's another big box gym opening here that are pretty popular out here called Crunch Fitness. Oh, yeah. I um, got them. But although it's a big box gym, the owner of this gym has a bit of a mentality about a community and setting it up right. And, you know, I, I literally got a membership. The gym isn't even open yet. At the I, crunch, right. about I walked through the gym. Um, I was just in the gym. Like just, I came in, you know, with on and out, just kind of do my thing. I'm getting walked through by a guy who I actually used to train, which was cool. Chris, that's uh, their training manager out there. The owner literally walked over just to introduce himself and walked away. Didn't even say he was the owner. I found out afterwards. I was hmm. like, oh, and he doesn't live here. He's got a lot of gyms. You know what I mean? And then you start looking around and the equipment is better. The vibe is better. And I'm like, oh, I have a new home. Hmm. So put that up, you know, and, and it's like that is so important. If you love bodybuilding, a, an owner, and I don't, like I said, this is not the equipment, even the nude place. It's nice. He's got more than anybody here. Doesn't have what I would have if I opened a gym. But right. it is the vibe. And that is so valuable Um, And I can say this as a member and I'm a paying member everywhere I go. Like I don't, I don't need free memberships. Like I pay, I do my thing and you're looking going as soon as the vibe changes, I was like, I'm ready to go. Like, uh, I I really hope if anybody that's, you know, that's looking at a gym that how, in my opinion, it has to be because no one is going to come to you and go, what I hate about your gym is that everyone's part of a community. It sucks. Like you might not care, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's definitely like, not going to hurt your feelings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like the it's like you couldn't possibly have too much good vibe 
<laughs> yeah. What about so, that, that say, question? Too much of a good vibe in here. <laughs> what about that question on the colors of the machines? Does that even matter? He said, you know, should you oh, get well, a matching that, or what? I mean, that just depends on your your personal taste. Um, mm-hmm. We we decided not to worry about it at first because of our budget. Yeah. And and secondly, um, I was able to sort of like you know convince the guys to a certain degree, at least for the first while. Um, that like some of the coolest gyms I'd been to didn't match, you know, like, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and, and they were, they were like, yeah, you're right. You know, like, and also too, um, you know, like I say, Jay Leno has a car collection, right? Yeah. He's mm-hmm. got like one of the biggest car collections out there. He's got like 500 cars and they're not all red. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He's got like, well, how many Ferraris do you think Jay Leno has if he has 500 cars? Are they all red? Right. Yeah. No, they're not all red. <laughs> Why would you want them all to be the same? Like, and and it's just to to us that corporate look was sort of that was part of like the our 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 saying nah fuck you know screw that we're not yeah we're not gonna bother looking like that we're not even gonna try like right. you know what I mean like you know you ever you ever sometimes I put on an outfit I'm about to go out the door and I'm like ah, matches a little too much. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta change it up just a little. You know what I mean, like I'll have my blue West Coast hat, my 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 royal blue chucks, a blue shirt, and black sweats, and I'm like, oh, I just need one less blue, so I'll change my hat. I put a black hat on. There we go. Yeah, I feel a bit ready to go. Yeah, like I have like a limit. I can't look too like too matchy match. It's not not enough it's not my 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 style so yeah so that's why i like it you know and like there's nothing like dino's gym man oh like, yeah like to be the least possible matching it's like awesome it just it's part of it like i don't care what anyone says the colors in there you walk in there and there's all those flags and all mm-hmm. that those unmatching machines red yellow blue black gray silver like yeah it's just awesome i always loved that i didn't mean to you know, love it. I just sort of like when it came down to it, I was like, fuck that. You, you know, what, you know what you reminded me of Ron is, uh, back when I was a kid and you played hockey, you go to like a tryout for a select team or whatever. And you could always tell who the realest players were immediately. Yeah. They were a mess. <laughs> Jersey <laughs> torn equipment wrecked, you know, like, and it was always funny. Cause you'd see a guy like roll out and, you know, mommy and daddy, cause all of us were fucking basically trust fund kids at that point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you you yeah. all got your gear, but you're like, oh, he's got the new Nike skates. Yeah, we're gonna light him up all weekend. Yeah, a long yeah. weekend for him. <laughs> like, and that's how you look at like when you walk into a gym. If I walk in, and this is you know again, this is like the big box thing. I'm like, there's three lines of equipment here because that's the only thing they buy. It's not the best, and I understand. Like, I, I get business. I know they're buying in bulk, so I'm not hating yeah, yeah, on it. Yeah. But when you walk into a gym and you see different colors and a bunch of different equipment, you're like. Okay, someone who loves bodybuilding or training in some way right. hand picked these pieces. Yeah. There's 17 brands in this gym. And by the way, those two I think were made in a garage. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's also other things in my life where like I've met, you know, like guys that have gyms where they've refurbished everything and had it all powder coated to match. I've met a handful of guys that have done that. Yeah. And that's like, that's super cool because yeah. like they put all that effort into restoring that piece and making it look brand new. So I also love that, <laughs> but you know, it's also like, do I want to spend all my time doing that? I don't know. Right. Well, it's like you said though, in the beginning, it's a, a financial thing, right? Like muscle yeah, yeah. factory all flows now. Like it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much all matches now. He bases, as he takes a piece of equipment out and puts something new in, it's not necessarily gone forever. It might just be getting refurbed. It might get sold. It might come back. But right. the, it is more in line now because there's money there to do it. In right. The beginning, right. Like, oh, this one's yeah. green and it was $400. <laughs> Bring it. It works. <laughs> <Yeah>, so <laughs> you, you establish your own brand too, right? So, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That was a good question. I liked it. Yeah, real quick what, though, Ron, yeah. you guys had your six years though, right? And you guys, it yeah, was your birthday, yeah. you had a huge celebration this week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a we had our six year anniversary at the gym, which is hard to believe, but yeah, six years. It's uh, awesome. So we had a big party. Um, we had a food truck doing these gourmet oh, burgers. No it was a really good catering company, and we, you know, 
we uh, had free burgers for the members. And uh, so everyone was training. There was all these like donut and cookie displays out. And we had, man, we had like one member made like a, a hundred um, like carrot cake, you know, muffins. And like, it was crazy how much food I walked in. And after we set that up in the morning and I was like, there's no way we're going to give all this food away. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way it was all completely gone. Like our members ate like, <laughs> like 500 donuts. Like just, I don't know what the hell we gave away, but it was ridiculous. Like everyone was like post-workout carving it. It was funny. There's, you see like the, the, the bikini competitors that just competed, they were just like plowing the cookies, the gourmet cookies, they were just like <laughs> cutting them up and plowing them. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was good. And then everyone was getting a burger and it was, so it was really cool. So we had a really great party at the gym. It went really well. And uh, we gave away like several thousand dollars worth of mutant and gasp stuff because we had all these awesome gym bags and we filled them up with prizes. And so we, we did it really good. Uh, it was really fun. So, you know, just to get all that awesome feedback. And it happened to be my birthday. If I turned 48, Jesus. Hell yeah. Clickety click. Almost, almost <laughs> half done. Almost half done. <laughs> Wait, are you going to live you know, to 100? You got a lot bigger plans for half. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, um, I got plans. I got plans to 100. I passed I'm, half a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> You're past half. I, I, I had to laugh because we, uh, we watched the. Um, You're past empty, Dusty. The, the You're on borrowed time already. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, we watched the videos, and, and when Ron was given his cake. Like you could see that Ron doesn't like things to be about him, so it gets like real like awkward in his face. <laughs> and Mickey goes, "I don't think Ron is really like into things being about him." I go, "Why do you think I did a whole post about him just to irritate him?" <laughs> <laughs> just so his phone you know how long it took? all day long. <laughs> yeah, you know that I have to write. I have to write something. I didn't know what to write. It was so I hate writing on those. <laughs> I enjoyed it so much. And the fact that she caught on made me very happy. I was like, see, she saw. <laughs> He's like, you bastard. <laughs> That's funny. That's great. All right. We did have a well, bunch more stuff, guys. We had one I wanted to jump to here because I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Um, oh, we should mention, too, guys, if you want to take part in the next show, that definitely comment below. Because uh, all your questions and comments, all that stuff helps to boost the programming up. And plus, it gives us stuff to talk about. So he said, uh, possible coaching related question for the next show. He says, been with a coach for about a year now and I'm seeing good results. Got shredded for my show, but constantly frustrated with some of the methods. Um, he has me doing zero direct cardio, despite me wanting to, and no bread and butter type movements like body, like barbell rows or deads, some machines in isolation. How do I go about addressing the issues that seem uh, without seem seeming like I'm being a jerk? Um, since whenever I mention it, the response is essentially you're making good progress uh, and looking good doing things my way. Uh, I truly like him as a person, but I'm not sure that our mindsets click or align well. I uh, don't want to seem like a coach hopper since um, they're also a trainer at my gym, but feel constantly frustrated with their methods. I have so much for this. You want to go first, <laughs> Dusty, because I don't want to. I don't want to line step. I want you to line step first. <laughs> I'll jump right I, over. The yeah, line. and I might not even have to talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. Here's the simple thing that that I think it's important for clients is results are not the only thing you're signing up for. Hmm. Okay, because literally anybody who reaches out to me, the one cookie cutter thing you will get is the exact same response email on an inquiry. And what it does is it breaks down what I do, how yeah. it works, how I communicate. Like, you know, like for example, you will not have my phone number. You don't need it. Those kinds of things. Now, the reason I do that is because I want you to know this is how I work. If it's not a fit for you, I'm not your coach. Hmm. Like, it's not a problem. And, I, and for some people, they're like, oh, I really need this. And I'm like, oh, I know somebody. And I'll send you their number. Like, so to me, that that fitting really matters, you know, because like Chris and I, I think some people I could see them feeling like Chris is, you know, in the beginning, like he'll I'll send an update and it's got it literally says wait days of the show and previous wait. 
and he sends back better than before picks in two days. I send back K. That is our relationship for 277 emails. That's all I need. But if you want someone that wants to hear about your day and why you're tired when you got to the gym because you got a flat tire, Chris ain't your guy. He don't give a shit. That's how I treat it. You know what I mean? So point being is it sounds to me like you don't fit well with the coach. Like, sure, the results are there, but you want to train a certain way. You want to do things. They're not out of bounds. And, and just for the record, I have clients that come and go all the time. It's if your coach takes it personally, then he's more worried about his wallet than you. Because I have clients that leave. They're like, I want to try my own thing for a while. Cool. Yeah. And they might come back. They might not. I have clients that I've worked with Ron. Ron has clients that have worked with me. I always laugh about that one because you essentially hired the a same guy but sent a different email. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but I mean, overall, you know, so, so to me, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> because I, I, I can tell you, simply put, like if somebody just said to me, because I'm old school, like, okay, I just need 10,000 steps a day. How do you want me to step? Yeah. I prefer that. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah, mean it's right. wrong, but it clicks with me better, you know? Yeah. So that's all I have to say on it. Ron, I still on this side of the line, I feel like. I feel like you have to cross No, it. that was good. That was good. Um, <laughs> because I actually, one of the things about this question is I could see it from both sides. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right? Um, like, in, on, on one hand... Like I could argue results matter, like hmm. getting results. Of course they do. Yeah. Like, you know, if he's getting obvious results, like it's, you know, like you look at two pictures of his back and you're like, oh my God, your lats are way wider. Like if, if he's getting like that sort of stuff, then don't <laughs> worry about the lacking uh, or don't worry about anything. Um, but uh, I can also see it from another way too, is it, I guess it's just my style, but I, I tell people how I think they should train. And I, mm -hmm. it's more of a philosophy and a way of thinking and that sort of thing. But I don't go through the, like, you must do this hammer machine with your yeah. hand right here. You must do this. You cannot do barbell rows. Like, I would never tell anybody that. <laughs> you can't do barbell rows. Do a bent over rowing movement. Pick one you like. Yeah. Like, that's right. how I would talk, right? Like, some days I do dumbbells. Some days I do barbells. Some days I do T-bar. But I'd want to do one unsupported bent row that target, like, really hits your core that you have to be strong on, you know. And if maybe also seated cable rows can fit into that, too. Good, you know, good solid sets of seated cable rows are also non-supported. So um, I would – that's how I would talk. I wouldn't say you can't do barbell rows. That's just me. So I also sort of think that that's a little weird. Um, right. Like, you're, what do you mean? You're a bodybuilder in yeah. a gym. Like what? What's his? You know, I wonder what the what if coach the gym's is. Busy? What What does the coach have to say? I wonder. Like, yeah, you know, that, and that I don't would know how he worded it, right? Yeah, I'd, you know? I'd wonder. Like, does a guy have an issue? Is there some reason that he's telling him like right. you really should do machines right now? You know, yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. You know. Mm. Yeah, he could. Yeah, he, you know, I could see if I was dealing with someone that just had such a poor habit of training too heavy constantly, and they just mm. they just so difficult to get them to stop training so heavy i can imagine like putting them on more chest supported stuff and trying right. to like <laughs> dial them back and i don't know there might be lots of reasons right we don't have all the info but those are just kind of two things that come to mind for me yeah i'd talk to him i'd ask him you know i'd just flat out ask him like okay because i do think that th there's a line there of you know, the questioning every single thing that a coach has you do. And yes. that, as a coach, I can tell you that there's a, maybe a lack of trust if you have to question everything. But if those yeah. things are important, then having a conversation about it, because my thought is this, like, so let's say we're so initially when I read this, I thought he was doing a contest prep, but he's already done with that. Like generally people don't need to do a lot of cardio if their plan is in check. But if you came to me and you're like, hey, I want to do cardio, I just for whatever reason you like cardio. Uh, very, very, yeah, rare person there. <laughs> we, we could probably add a little bit more food or something. You know what I mean? Like you could figure out something. It's it don't, things don't have to be an absolute. But yeah, I'd just talk to him. You know, I'd talk to him, and, and maybe like you said, Dusty, it's just not a good fit. You know, maybe that's it. It's simple as that. Plus, the conversation is good because I do feel like um, some people really want to know why. Yeah, and that's a, that's good. That's fine. So I do tell my clients all the time: if you ever wonder why we're doing something, ask. Like nothing is random. Yeah. So there there is an answer, and you're not questioning me. 
Right. You're asking a question. That's, you know what I mean? Sometimes I, I do nervous. think it's, it, yeah, there's no you reason know? to do that because um, I have seen a few that I, that I knew personally that I'm like, oh, you like controlling people. That's why you're a coach. Got it. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like Ron said, at the end of the day, I write my clients training because there's a, a level of volume and things I want them to do. But if they're like, hey, they, we got this new machine in the gym. I'm like, go ahead. Seems like yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is it still a <laughs> compound quad movement? Yeah. Okay. Can you still take it to hell and back? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Go try and figure it out. See how it feels. Do some work you know, sets on it, you know, get going. So yeah, it's, it sounds like though, I mean, the, the conversation should happen. Like you said, Scott, because you want to give someone a, a, a chance because maybe you haven't directly said like, I really want to bar bow row. I, yeah. I highly doubt he's going to look at you and go, that's a terrible idea. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you know, gravity doesn't help anyone in bodybuilding. Right. <laughs> that was good. We do have a bunch more. I don't know if you guys have anything too, um, but I think, let's see, what is this one here? Um, oh, this is a good one too. We had a bunch of good questions this week from Vinny. He says, um, can you still make progress if you aren't getting stronger every week? Like if you are stagnant on a lift for a month, does that mean that you're not making any progress? Uh, Dusty, Ron, Scott, in your prime, what is the longest you went without progressing on a lift? Either more reps or more weight for the same reps or more. Um, yeah, you can still make gains. I mean, progress isn't going to be linear in strength or in actual, you know, muscle. Like you're not, you know, everything's going to kind of go like, like this. You're going to have periods of time where you, your strength isn't going to go up for a while, but then you might get like a, a little burst. And that always happened with my weight gains too. I would be the same weight for months and months and months. I'd be like, geez, what do I have to do? And then I would just suddenly gain like four or five pounds. You yeah. know what I mean? I remember that happening several times, you know, trying to bust through a weight plateau. And then like all of a sudden I'd be like, step on the scale one day and I'm like, Oh my, there we go. You know, it stay. It would stay. <laughs> yeah. And it would stay, thing. you know, like, yeah. So there was like all that, that sort of happened too, but there was long periods of time. And there's also a lot of lifts where, you know, you, you, you take it to hell and back for like the whole off season. Maybe you get your hack squad up to like, you know, some new level. You've never done six plate hacks before. And by the end of your off season, you've gone from a five plate for six to a six plate for 10. So you had like, a killer progression on your hack squad over six months. You know what I mean? You went up a plate and, and reps and, and, but, but now, you know, you've, you've gone two you, you know, a month or two months without getting any stronger on hacks. Well, then what I would typically do is I would drop the hacks out and I would replace it with something else like, you know, a different, squatting motion maybe i'd go smith squat or i'd go do something like that and and you know the first time you start with that exercise you're gonna you know kind of have to figure out your weight and you can just progress from there and, and you maybe make rapid progress and within a few months you put a plate on your smith squat because you're getting really good at it you're training with more poundage on it you do that for another six months maybe you get up five and a half plates on the smith squat and then you know maybe you swap it out and you go back to hacks but you're not right where you were when you left off on hacks. You're a little below that maybe, but mm -hmm. you get back up, to, up there and maybe you make more progress on the hacks. So like it would be all this be trading in and out of exercises and kind of, you know, reprogressing on them and then past old barriers and like all this just inching, inching, inching forward over all these exercises, all, all these months and months and months. That's how that's, that's a more realistic way to look at it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that that's, I mean, one thing that gets lost in podcasts, messages, Instagram, social media is it's not all, I mean, I would be deadlifting a thousand pounds by now if it just kept going up. Yeah. You know and that's I mean? the argument you hear from people. <clears throat> if progressive overload work, we'd all be benching a thousand, you know? Yeah. But the problem is this, it's also, and, and you know this, Scott, it's after a while you're, you're doing the same movement, you're doing it better. Yeah, you feel yeah. it better, and you might actually be doing the same weight for less reps, less weight for the same rep. It doesn't, but you're connecting better, you know. So progression is not always black and white pounds. 
I think Love that's that. enormous. Um, and I think it's something that gets lost because you see when we're trying to quickly say progressive overload, mm -hmm. it's like one more pound or one more rep. That's progressive mm -hmm. overload. That's only half the story because you find out, wait, when my, when I brought my foot down an inch and a half, <laughs> I felt it more half in my an quads. <laughs> and now I have to bring the weight down and I'm starting at a new, basically a new movement. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm progressing again. And I think those are the things as you get more experienced, you really learn is how much are you activating the muscle while you're doing these things? Um, and then one thing that I really have to drive home is if you are someone who's trying to connect with progressive overload, you cannot walk into the gym and get on the hack squat first every Tuesday and think it's going to keep going up. It's, it's seven days between workouts. I think one thing that gets missed amongst the guys who do a lot of progressive overload like myself was hack squat was every third quad day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I had two workouts for quads between me trying to beat that number again. You know what I mean? Yep. And that gets lost. Like, yeah, I was going up every hack day that were divided by three workouts. So, and then right. the next time I'm in there doing the leg press or the pendulum squat or the Smith squat, and those were slowly ramping up as well, because I think the other part that gets lost is in my opinion, you're not strong unless you're strong in all rep ranges. Hmm, like yeah. you can hang with me for eight. That's cool. Can you hang with me for 30? Cause we're doing that next. And I feel like yeah. that's when you, you know, and again, like Ron said, maybe you move out of movement or maybe you go, cool. Now I'm going to see how strong I am for 20. Yeah. I'm going to change this up. Yeah, yeah. That is brutal. So just another, another way of looking at angles. Cause I was like, you Ron, I actually just threw movements out quicker. I hit yeah. a wall for a few weeks, but everything else was progressing. <clears throat> I'd go, that movement's dead, not me. Hmm. Right. Move it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and it was always yeah. fun anyways to so get a new refresher. And that, now you're like, you're like Bambi getting on a new thing. You're like, oh, this is awkward, you know? And you're sore as yeah. hell the next day and yeah. made it fun. Yeah, you know, that, that's a very good point because even when I was talking, I neglected to mention that that's what I always did was it would be every second or third week would be the repeat. So mm -hmm. sometimes it was two workouts I would have and I would go bounce, 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 yeah. bounce. And other times it was three. And I did that for a long time. I would, and it wasn't like the workouts were totally, absolutely structured. Like, But I knew what I was starting with. I knew what my target exercise was. Like it's leg press day, it's hack squat day, it's barbell mm -hmm. squat day, Yeah, right? right? And I would have like, you know, or, or, and then I also actually for legs, I would usually have one day where I would start with extensions. So right. it would be like press hack, start with extensions and then do my quad stuff, you know? So there would be that one week where your mentality was different mm -hmm. and it was almost like a really good mental recovery tool. Cause you weren't yeah. literally going to be in a car accident right off the bat. Every single <laughs> leg day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here we go <laughs> yeah like you know you on. <laughs> hey, and like that's 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 where i'm that's where i'm like i'm that anxiety was like that was leg day i would drive into the gym like oh, i can't believe i'm gonna do this to myself again i got this <laughs> i'm such you an know? idiot but then yeah. that other day that day that, that was day not like that like, you oh, it's like kind of more chill first today right oh, right it's gonna be way different like because you know it knocks like a plate and a half off your next exercise right you yeah. go to you go to do your you know maybe you're doing pendulum after extensions well that's gonna drop like it's gonna kill your pendulum you're gonna knock like two plates off that thing right so it's you know that your your back and hips aren't gonna be as sore the next day i don't know <laughs> you know what's funny about that though ron is extensions are the only movement for quads that i've actually like turned around and flipped the machine off when i was done like i was mad at it <laughs> for what right. i just did because right. the pain that takes place in your quads during extensions for me yeah I, when I used to work with uh, Chris Cormier, that was our that was one of the things we did. He would he'd have you go to the top and hold it for a two count, and then come down, and you'd keep going till he was grabbing behind your ankles and helping you pull up, and then yeah, hold. Yeah. You'd get done, and then he would immediately go, "Okay, now stretch your quad." And I'm like, "No, yeah, just, <laughs> envelop it with, just fill yeah. it with blood." Yeah, make yeah. it worse. Then I, it was like reprieve to go over to the hack squad. I'm like, ah. Oh. Hey, yeah, I remember. Thank you. I, I remember <laughs> back in uh, the day in the in the '90s, we would do force negatives on the extensions. Oof. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, like we'd go to failure, and mm. then they'd lift. We'd lift the heels up, 
and 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 then they'd try to hold it and you'd push <laughs> yeah you know and and then you'd lift and then you'd get to that second maybe you'd get two force negatives and then the third one you'd drop and it would just fall <laughs> and you're like hey you're done you know what i mean i remember doing that to each other you know good times and then you know someone tears a patel tendon and it's like oh we can't do that there's anymore. always one guy that ruins everything With the one guy yeah <laughs> How about this one? Uh, in reference to last week's episode, uh, we have to have a podcast that describes how to locate and secure a crooked vet. And was it necessary to haul a trailer with a fake horse? In it? <laughs> you had another comment that I couldn't I couldn't put up because it it just was right. good. in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, Equally right. as funny though. He's good. Yeah. No. Well, this was a long time ago. This is like ninety four ninety five you didn't need you gotta remember effort. back then you actually had a horse and you were on a buggy yeah yeah you guess, right? still living on a farm <laughs> still living it was, living it on was a farm back then, easier so to do it was just easier to do you know yeah, yeah. all right how about this Fun one times. um question for the next episode i know there's no magic split but for a newer ish trainee if intensity, form, and execution are good, can you benefit from a progressive overload full body split if you train three days a week due to higher frequency? Due to its, yeah, higher frequency. Um, I mean, you definitely could. There's, there's, a, there's plenty of like place for full body training for a certain amount of time when you're starting out looking for muscle gain. I mean, there, it, I never did it. You know, I'm not, I don't recommend that for people, but if you I guess if you're super new to the gym, it might be totally fine. You know, um, you know, go in and maybe they're just benching, squatting, deadlifting and rowing or something. I don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're doing shoulder presses, like five exercises and they're just getting stronger every week and throw a little bit of variety in and, and go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and just, you know, Leg press Monday, squats Tuesday or Wednesday, and lunges on Friday. Maybe that's what they're doing. But I mean, you, you know, the lower their the lower someone's intensity is, the faster they recover, right? So, you know, when people starting out, if they're super new to the gym, they don't have a bunch of experience, their output isn't high or anything like that. They're not like some like athlete who's crossing over to bodybuilding and has all this intensity. I mean, there's there's lots of gains to be made training like that. You know, you could take the average office worker and like triple their strength, I bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, the answer is yes, but I mean, I don't know. There's also a lot of other ways to do it. I, I, I was just, I while you were going, I, I wanted to look something up because I thought this was a good tie-in. It was a conversation Dante were having about how complicated things have gotten hmm. and why something like an upper lower split or a full body split even could work. Um, right. So I'm going to just skip and read this. And this is something that he wrote. He um, says, every time a sledgehammer is needed, the modern day crew is trying to do it with needle nose pliers. So many people paralyzed by overanalyzation, they can't even think straight anymore. And I blame a lot of that on the trainers. This isn't nanotechnology and the study of black matter trainers so badly want to look elite to create this niche for themselves is a rather simple endeavor of progressively doing more today than they did yesterday form. Um, I said, by the way, I said black matter, not matters. It's not lives. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got <laughs> the dark star reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says, uh, do you know what destroys isolation? Overlap. An incline reverse bench, reverse grip bench branch will crush the triceps, front delts, upper chest, and pour size on so much quicker and better than the idiot guy over there doing one-handed cable tricep kickbacks holding on to a ball. Yeah. Like, that's why a, a, a full body movement does work. But the, the mm -hmm. point that I was wondering, the reason I wanted to draw this in with a question was, you're not going to be doing isolation movements if you're doing full body work. Like Ron said, you're doing a barbell row, you're doing a press, you're doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all going to be very compound movements that are hitting a lot of things all at once. So I think a lot of people, what they lose when they even hear the thought of full body training is they're trying to take their five day split and imagine doing that in a day. Yeah. Yeah. They can't, <laughs> and they're they like, can't grasp. so, so like, I go to the gym put, for six hours on Monday. Where do I put my cable <laughs> rear delt laterals? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> yeah. They don't exist till so you the, put a, a plate and a half on your deadlift. Yeah. So that is why for a new person, I think it absolutely does work because you are going to go in there, hit the basic meat and potatoes and get rolling. And that's something that that's where essentially a lot of his DC protocols came from was, well, rather than doing five things for triceps today, I'm going to do one, but I'm going to keep in mind, I just did a, 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 you know, a rest pause on a shoulder press. I just did a rest pause on an incline bench and now I'm doing a reverse grip bench. I'm going home. My triceps just got annihilated. Oh wait. Right. And when I did both presses, so did my chest and my shoulders. Oh True. wait, when I did that reverse grip, so did my chest and my shoulders. You are training all three of those things on all three movements, even yeah. though each one has an individual focus point. Yeah. And yeah. that's what's getting lost. So Yes, the full body thing is awesome. Just make sure you're going in with a full body mentality because I've, I've actually had guys say me like, I'm doing a full body and literally one of the things I see will be like single arm rope press down. And I'm like, oh, you missed it. You missed it. Waste of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and if they're newer, the their ability to generate intensity is going to be on the lower end, right? So yeah. it's not yeah. like they need to do anything super, super advanced. You could probably, heck, you could probably bench three days a week and be fine. In fact, I bet you that if you go to like any prison across America, they're probably doing like full body every day. You know what I mean? They're just, and that's all they do. A few sets of this, a few bench, you know, some some whatever else they've got going on. And they just, every day, you just keep doing it. And I really do think the, 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 um, right. the, the amount of equipment we have now has hurt the um, beginner and intermediate level. Yeah. Because aging myself here, but when we went to school, there was just free weights. And so that's where you trained. So there was bench presses. A really nice gym might have an incline. Um, you had squat racks. I mean, you know what I mean? Like that was what was available and kids were growing. So yeah. I love like, it's gotten popular again where we're at. Like the kids walk in the gym and I mean, I love it. I see them bench. Then I'm watching them do dips and I'm like, like real dips. Yeah. I'm like, yes, the basics are getting cool again. And, and I think that's where all the progress comes from, you know, but uh, again, when you're, when you're surrounded by options, it's hard to not want to go try this new, weird, very focused tricep movement that a dip would be better than. Yeah. I predict I, it's going to come back like to that. Like I predict it'll come full circle. Just like yeah. I predict that all the over analysis of labs is going to be done away with too, because people are, I think they're spending so much money on all these different labs that don't really end up making any difference in their lives. I think that there's mm. going to be like bite back to that. And the fact that Dante is right. Like people are feeling paralyzed. They're just going to say, screw it. I want to do full body. I'll just go to the gym three days a week and do that. It's just going to, yeah. it's going to come full circle. Yeah. And I also, I've, I had a good reminder that I want to bring in here is um, I know I, I mentioned I was having some hip pain and issues. I really irritated my hip by just like overdoing a bunch of shit. And I yeah. think it was one trick that I, was working on on my bike that I did like a thousand attempts on and I had to jump and turn my foot, like externally rotate my leg really far and I'd make this little hop. And, and after I like started pulling the trick off, I'd done like several thousand attempts and my hips started really bugging me whenever I did that trick. And I'm like, Oh shit, I got to take a break. So I was resting it, but it hurt to leg press. Hmm. Like the depth bringing my knee to my chest really hurt in the front. Cause it was like, there was some, some, some little bit of, bursitis in there and some mm -hmm. hip hip flexor uh, strain so i was like well how do i get my like you know i gotta get my volume i don't want my legs to shrink so the one thing that i had no pain on at all was belt squats yeah mm -hmm. i remember you saying so, that so like the last several leg days i've just done like four working sets of belt squats and then some extensions and that's it and mm -hmm. like my quads have been tanked like sore and feeling full and like you know so we also get stuck on variety we need think well i need four exercises to stimulate this muscle mm, right I, I need three different angles yeah right like i got it i gotta have a hack squat i gotta have a leg press i gotta have a, a you know single leg movement to really get the full quad i want to hit it from all the angles you know we, yeah. we 
that's that's cool and great and and it definitely needs to be done to like develop a complete physique over time but in a pinch yeah you just need to hit it yeah like you just need a good exercise that has a good range of motion that you can load throughout you know you don't want it to be super easy at the top or super easy at the bottom you know you, you don't want a weird yeah. strength curve on it yeah just want a good solid movement that you can load on and and crush it and that's all you really need you know mm -hmm. i'm like doing literally the most ridiculous quad workout like as far as being you know belt squats are not the same car accident that hack squats are <laughs> yeah. let's just be honest here i don't care how strong or how hard you train belt squats are easier on your body they're still super hard and i you're going all out but like the next day you're back and neck and like you know what i mean it's just a different yeah. toes yeah <laughs> so I, yeah so, so i'm technically doing the easiest quad workout i've ever done and my quads are still just like pumped to like just balloon pumped can barely bend my knees the next day my mm -hmm. quads are sore you know like so it's just a good reminder absolutely i think Especially that was about 48 yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> What was that? It's getting old. It's especially a 48. <laughs> yeah. Almost halfway done. I think that's that's about all we had for questions. Uh, easy peasy <laughs> said, I watch different bodybuilding podcasts for different reasons. This one is for wisdom. Not to be confused with Milos. That's a different kind of wisdom, although <laughs> equally important. I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Uh, I, I imagine that's more into the Milos's realm of depth on how he does things. Oh, I see. Oh. Yes, you know, a different Not kind of. In, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Kind of yeah, I yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I appreciate that. Like how many okay. IUs of wisdom? You know, different. Yeah, yeah exactly. At what time? Love <laughs> your daily dose. Yes, I hope yes. that every. I hope that people get at least three or four IUs of wisdom out of every episode that we do. <laughs> yes. but I think. I think that probably. It. You know, I know. I read an. Interesting but I want to give farm grade IUs though from us. Farm grade. Farm grade. Well, you got to stack grade. Ron and Dusty together, and then you get. It. It's about the same right. as three to four. It equates Whoa. to about three to four actual units if you were to take that L of wisdom. L Lane Norton put up a really great post about the placebo effect. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, I'd like to think that there's some kind of placebo effect from listening to our show. Like people just think, man, I gotta be stronger. <laughs> there's no way. I'm the gym no stronger. Can... Yeah, like the maybe they get to the by the time they arrive to the gym, they're like, Yeah, man, just go hard. That's what it's all about. You know, they're in a good mind and maybe it's a placebo effect. I don't yeah. know what it is, but yeah. since I started listening, you know, it's got bigger. Stronger. It's got bigger. Yeah. <laughs> People are scared to do anything less than 225 on the bench if Dusty's around. You know? <laughs> That'll get you stronger. I've injured so many kids. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Oh, well, we'll wrap this up. We're going to do uh, another reacts, aren't we? Yes. Oh, and by okay. the way, uh, it's kind of too last minute, but I wanted to tell you guys, so I'm not telling the listeners to come on out. But hey, if you got the time, still come on out. If you're in Columbus, I'm going to be there this weekend at Swiss, the elite FTS Swiss thing. And I'm doing a presentation about podcasting. Nice. Awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You know, I did have one question I wanted to ask you before we wrap. Yeah. I know you just did an episode of one of your other shows on trend. Yes. Yeah. What were the takeaways of that episode? So give us a little crossover wisdom from well, what you guys were talking about there. So Tim, I, I met Tim when I was in Australia and he is a researcher. I forget the school he goes to that he's affiliated with. And um, it basically he did a study um, uh, with people doing a survey that have used or um, are using. And, and it was kind of like the perceived risks that they were taking um, the perceived um, side effects that they were getting. Uh, it, it, that's basically what they went into. And and um, one of the takeaways would be that he found that a, kind of a, a nice a nice sweet spot would be between the, what do you say? I think it was like something like 60 to 150 per week was the, the sweet spot for no more than four weeks. And if somebody can do that, that they're, uh, overall side effects are going to be 
much lower, you know, their overall issues in general. But the, the big thing really is just like the perception that the compound has today. You know, people see that as being like the thing that they have to do. I don't know how many times you guys have noticed it, but I get questions all the time like, hey, can I do a contest prep without it? You know, they, they yeah. really think that it's impossible. And so there's that aspect of it. And then there's the aspect of it where new guys want to get the most they can out of any cycle that they were to do. So they naturally assume like, well, because of that, because I want to get the most, why waste my time with anything else? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I want to use. Because like, obviously yeah. I want to make the best progress, right? So there's, yeah. that, it was more or less that. It was kind of like the social side of the compound. Right. That's fascinating. Okay. Okay. Do we, do we have... I've I've had some people ask me lately if they think that there's like a problem with trend balloon quality or something because you know trend used to be a thing like you don't hold water on it no one holds water on trend it's a perfect contest drug you know all that sort of thing and I've had some people lately talk to me like they're like I had to drop my trend out because it was really watery if you like I don't know I water I, is it they, maybe they're just taking too much like they're getting so high in their doses because some of these guys I don't even want to know how much they're taking right. So I don't know if there's if we're seeing a threshold for when they start to see like other side effects that aren't supposed to be there, like from maybe like impeding their kidney function or something. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> we haven't you haven't seen any of that. It's very possible with the dosing because it, it and I know you guys have seen it, but very very regularly for me to have a new client, and I'll always ask like, "What have you kind of done in the past?" It gives me a feeler of where we can start, and. Um, most younger guys have taken more than I've ever taken at a time in my entire life. Mm, right. All of them. Like, yeah, it's very, 500 a week is normal. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what are yeah, you? Yeah. Why? Not yeah. necessary. Um, so I, I think that you're, you know, a, a good solid guess is you're right, Ron. Like you're reaching a point where, you know, it's back to the Victoria conversation. Like your body is fighting. Yeah, there's too much going sickness. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so people, it's reacting to that. Yeah, I think some of these you guys know. are like, "Oh, trend, trend doesn't convert to estrogen." Oh, you don't hold water on trend. Oh, I'll take a thousand megs a week. Yeah, yeah, right. And it's like, well, now you now you got like electrolyte imbalances <laughs> in your kidneys and things aren't working. I don't know whatever's going on, but it's just yeah, not yeah. how it works. And what so, else yeah. are they taking? Because there's yeah, like a yeah, lot yeah. of polypharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get that far in, you know, so yeah. no I, I think study has been done on yeah. someone, you know, <laughs> you know, they forget like, Hey man, I remember one time I sat down and I just counted the number of drugs I was on. It was like 12. Yeah. 12, 14. That's not crazy talk for a contest, like, prep. but you can do that with moderate doses versus, you know, right. Okay. Wild West, Scott. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Okay, remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. Yes, help us out. Hit the buttons. That's all you got to do. Click Clicking buttons to help us out. That's, yeah. that's how that's little we ask. we ask of you. Just <laughs> click, click just a little cursor. Just think of how much effort you go through to watch certain types of porn. The least yeah. you can do is <laughs> just searching. Click. A click. Fast yeah, forward, setting rewinding. up the VPN, putting up the, the you know, the... The whole encrypted server thing. Yeah, I know. Okay. A lot. You know, is that just me? It's <laughs> a lot of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> is that a, a Canada thing, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah we're trying to keep <laughs> Trudeau out of anymore. our porn history. Yeah, there's a new Canadian law coming soon. Um, okay, okay. And remember, I am mutant.com. Uh, go there, get your ISO surge, get your all in, and everyone should get on the gear. And I am mutant.com. Madness, you, you always leave madness out. And now that I'm I don't using, like madness, now that I'm, I'm on the madness, Dusty, all right? Okay. Half, so strong. Half scoop. So there's, it's, it's yeah, the this madness. Half scoop, half scoop of madness. And then I have my own beta alanine and citrulline that I put into it. So it's like a perfect, ah, okay. It's so a do you like your custom combo. cocktail instead Absolutely. of using madness. the all in? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like yes. Literally, the first time I took it, I was like, that's a perfect name. Yeah. <laughs> My heart was going. It's beating along and I'm like, cool, I haven't gotten to the gym yet. It's a little less madness <laughs> next time. Just a little less madness. Okay. Half the madness. Okay. All right. Well remember okay. Dusty twenty, big Ron twenty, get your twenty percent off. Yes. And uh yeah, thanks everybody. And remember, it's just bodybuilding. I liked that one. You've been changing your inflection every episode. Yeah. I it feels really good. <laughs> multiple though. meanings, right? There's multiple yeah. meanings. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs>